Hello and welcome to the second video in this series for tips with Cocos 2DX. In this video we're going to look at subclassing a CC sprite and why you might want to do that because it's one of the most fundamental things, or certainly in my opinion, that you need to be able to do uh, when you're starting with your games with Cocos 2DX. And it's also one of the things that I see written on forums a lot of times um, relevant to sprites that's recommended, but the explanations at first read, especially if you're inexperienced, appear quite complicated when in fact the concept and how you do it is very easy. I'm starting from, as I always will in these videos, the base project from video one. Uh, the setting up of that, etc, etc, and the source files are in video one. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you have a look because every video will be started from this state. And I've added into the project resources file tree-hd.png, uh, which will be in the download zip file with the code for this video. And this will be our sprite playing the starring role. So before we start looking at actually subclassing, let's add a sprite into our application because at the moment the application doesn't do anything um, but show a blank screen. And we do this by making a CC sprite pointer, I'll call it tree, and then using CC sprite, and then there's a static create method. And inside here we want to say tree-hd.png. And now we've created our tree, we need to position our tree so we can call the public function set position. You see this takes a CC point as an argument, which is just a structure with an X and a Y. The framework provides a macro to make create a CC point from two floats. So we'll create it from the visible size dot width and divide this by two and the visible size dot height whoops not dot hello world the visible size dot height and also divide this by two and last but not least to see it we need to actually say this so our layer and we need to add as a child our tree so if I run this application now it doesn't do very much we should have a tree in the middle of the screen and indeed we do have a tree in the middle of the screen Let's go a little bit further and let's actually move the tree to wherever we click or press with our finger or click with the mouse on the screen. To do that we need to obviously get where we've touched which we did in the setup for this project, the starting point, this tap location, which means we need to set the position of our tree to that tap location. So I'll just copy this code in here and just do tap.x by tap.y and also of course we haven't got access to this tree in here because the tree was created locally inside init. So we need to take this tree and make it a variable that's visible to the whole class in the private section. I'll just prefix this properly. And last but not least, uh, back in hello world scene.cpp, we can remove the pointer and the sprite here. And now when I run the application, the tree should move to wherever we click on the screen. OK, so subclassing a CC sprite, what's all of that about? Well, let's imagine you've got some bombastic game and trees come and come off the screen and you've got to battle the trees. And to do that, you might want to know, let's say, how many lives are left of the tree, how many times the tree's been hit, and let's say the total time that the tree has been alive. And you might think, okay, well, that's all right then. Let's take the number of hits. Every time we click on a tree, that's a hit. You would say, well, that's okay. I'll go into hello world scene.h. I'll make a private variable called number times hit. And inside touch here, I'll increment the number of hits. And that's fine. That would record for our, the, the information for our tree sprite. The problem is, is when you start writing games, you usually need at least, let's say, four or five, but usually 10 or 20 bits of information about the sprite, um, its state, and all sorts of kind of extra things. And you'll most likely have more than one sprite. So just with the example of a couple of bits of information for the tree, say you had number of times clicked and time since last click, you would need two variables for this one tree. Let's say you had three trees on there, you might say, okay, I need to create three sprites, but that suddenly means I need six variables in the private section here, and I'll have to say each time there's a click on the screen, if click is on tree one, then update those two variables, else, and so on. And you can imagine things start becoming unmanageable very, very quickly. And then when you start getting sprites, the number of sprites on the screen, depending on whether they're dead or alive, so that can grow and shrink, so you start storing them in an array, 
then it starts to become almost impossible to index other arrays of containing the information that you're storing about each individual sprite. Point being, it becomes impossible to manage. So the ideal, for instance, would be able to say, the tree in question, I just want to say get clicks, let's say, and that returns the number of clicks on that particular sprite. And the way you do this is to subclass CC sprite. And what you do is you subclass the public parts of CC sprites. You have access to the public properties and the functions of that particular class. Now, if you're familiar with C++, very familiar, this won't be anything new. And it's probably not much point to this video. But most people, I think, jump into Cocos 2DX not being completely familiar with C++. And it's the first thing that, uh, that you often need to do. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to, inside the touches here, every time our tree is touched, we're going to print to the screen how long it was since the previous touch and we're going to print to the screen how many times it's been touched in total. Well, not the tree, but the screen. So to do our subclassing, we need to create, obviously, our new sprite. So we'll create a new class. In Xcode, you do it by doing right-click a new file, C++ class. Depending on your IDE, it'll be slightly different. But make a new C++ car class, and I'm going to call it C my tree, like so. And Xcode, for me, creates a couple of new files, the header file here. I'll take out the half a megabyte of unnecessary IO stream code and also the implementation file. Now I'm going to take this include here already and paste that at the top of the hello world scene.cpp. At the top of hello world scene.h, I'm already going to pre declare the C my tree class so that the app, the compiler knows about it. And I'm going to change now the type of our tree into a C my tree. Now, of course, that's going to give an error here because the static create function of CC sprite is not virtual, so it's not overridable. Uh, we need to find some other way of initializing um, this function. But what this does do is this returns obviously a pointer to a CC sprite. So we want to cr have some function inside our a tree class, a static function like this, which returns a pointer to C my tree. So that's the first thing we'll do now. So we'll create our class, and we now need to subclass the public parts of CC sprite. To do that, we need to include the cocos2d.h header file at the top here. And now what we'll say is subclass and then cc sprite public parts like so and this allows us then to write our function so we'll make a, a, a public a, a public function and static and this will then return the uh, pointer to our object see my tree so it works in exactly the same way as the create for cc sprite and we'll call this then create tree and this then takes a const car and the file pointer to the file name, like so. So this is working in exactly the same way that the create works for CC sprite. So inside the implementation file here, then we'll actually set about creating our sprite to then return it. And the other thing, of course, that I need here is the prefix. So the first thing we'll do is make our sprite and we're not going to use any particular kind of constructor, just an empty constructor like so, to create uh, the object. And why is that giving me an error? It's giving me an error because I haven't typed new, have I? Okay, good. And now what we'll say is if this object was created, and now we want to initialize, and now there is a public fu a member function, a non-static of um, CC sprite, so we can say and sprite and initialize with file and here we give the file name so if we constructed our object and we've managed to, initi managed to initialize it with this file then we can call, put something on it called auto release which is supplied by the framework which can, keeps track of the memory of our sprite releases it for us at the right moment and then we can return our sprite otherwise if something went wrong in here then we can make use of a macro, and I'll leave you to have a look at what that macro actually does, but we can save delete this, and then just return and null. 
like so. And that's what we need to do then to be able to create our tree sprite. So I'm going to go back into hello world scene.cpp. I'm just going to copy this create tree now. And where we have the red error here, we can now put create tree and we can change this to C and my tree like so. Oops. And this creates then our tree for us. And apart from that, everything else, the code should remain the same. Because we've subclass CC sprite, we still have this set position in this manner. So if I just run the application now, and our tree jumps around the screen exactly as it did before. So now let's make use of this subclassing and let's show you for an example then like I was talking about how we might then use this subclassing to have some extra information. So let's look at the number of clicks and the time since the last click. So we'll make some private variables, one called numClicks and we'll make one other one a float called uh, time and I'll call it since last. And we want to be able to do a few things there. We want to be able to uh, reset, uh, reset the time and we want to be able to reset the clicks. We want to be able to log our, I'll say log info, so log our time and clicks to the screen. We want also to be able to update our time with float delta time and we want to be able to increment, in, increment uh, the number of clicks every time we click the screen. Now these are very relatively simple functions so I'm going to actually put the, the code just on one line inside here like so because it's fairly simple stuff. space and increment clicks. So to reset the time then we just say that the time, oops, and again the keyboard has switched its language, never mind. So time since last equals zero. In the reset clicks we want to take the num clicks and set that equal to zero. In the log of the info we'll do a cc log and we'll just say num clicks and time since last and we'll make this a percentage and I'll just put a 0.1f so we don't have uh, too many um, decimal places. We have uh, num clicks and time since last. Update the time then will be to take our time since last and increment this by the delta time in seconds and I don't need this semicolon outside here do I? I'll just remove this and the increment clicks then takes our num clicks and just increments that by one every time. So that's all we need then to complete our subclass sprite as our MyTree class. And now what we can do then is jump into Hello World Scene and actually implement this information. Actually, before we do that, let's um, inside the creation here. Now we have the auto release. Let's just say sprite and we'll reset the time and we'll say sprite and reset the clicks. So we reset those to zero when we create the sprite. And now inside Hello World Scene we can deal with the information. So every time the game is updated we want to take our tree and we want to uh, increment the time. So inc uh, oop, I wanted to increment the time. Have I called it something else? Update time, sorry. So inside here then we want to take our tree and update the time with delta time like so. And then when a tap has been made, first thing we'll do is we'll log our information. And now what we'll do is we'll increment the number of clicks. And what we'll also do now then is we will reset the time since the last click and in fact we'll increment the clicks before we uh, log our info because a tap has now been made. And that's all we need to do now then to run the application and hopefully it builds which it does. I'll move it up a little bit because it's more important to see the console below. 
But now you can see that we've had one click and it was three and a half seconds. I've clicked again, 4.3, click quickly, one and a half, and clicking around. And you can see now that we've got exactly the same behavior as we had as when we had a CC sprite, but now we're actually recording and updating some more information that we've got contained because we've subclassed it and added some information using our C my tree class. And that, in a nutshell, is why you would subclass a CC sprite. So in terms of having a much bigger game, you would have things like lives, energy, all this kind of thing, active, inactive, all that kind of thing would be stored then with all of your functions here. Inheriting or subclassing the public parts of CC sprites, you can carry on using all of the stuff exactly as a CC sprite, but with your extra information available. And hopefully now you've seen in this video that, although it's a little bit of code, it's actually a really easy thing um, to be able to do. So that's it then for this video. I hope it's helped. I hope it was relatively clear. If there are any problems, then please uh, post uh, the questions in the comments section for the video. I'll include the code and the tree-hd.png uh, tree in the download. So thanks very much for watching and until the next video.